Good morning and welcome to C6 Church Online. Our mission is to make disciples of all nations. We are so glad that you can join us online today and hope that this is a meaningful time for you. Please listen to the following announcements. Please click the link we have provided for you to fill out your connection card. We want to hear from you and stay connected with you. When you start filling out your connection card, wait till after the teaching to hit submit. You'll have an opportunity to respond to the Pastor Zach's teaching. If you or someone you know is in need as a result of the impact of the coronavirus pandemic, please go to this website for help, www.coronahelpsf.com. C6 Church is part of several churches in Sioux Falls that have come together to provide help for our city in times like this. Just like in our physical gatherings, you can still worship God with your tithes and offerings. Here are three ways you can give today. You can give at c6church.com, text GIVE to 940-236-0778, and you'll be able to give via text. Mail your check to C6 Church, 2601 South Minnesota Avenue, Suite 105, PMB 360, Sioux Falls, SD 57105. Easter is upon us. Invite your friends and family to join us for Easter at C6 Church online on our YouTube channel or Facebook. The time will be 10.30 a.m. April 12, 2020. Please share our Facebook ad for Easter on your page. Relax and enjoy the service. Hello, welcome to C6 Church Online. I'm excited to have you join us for our online service. As you all know, we're in unprecedented times. Um, and as a result of that, almost all churches are online now. And many churches don't meet uh, or even shoot their messages from their auditorium. So I am coming to you from my den. I'm coming to you from, you know, the comfort of my house uh, this, this, this morning. And it's just the times that we find ourselves in. We have always known that the building is not the church. We are the church. The people are the church. So welcome to Church Online, C6 Church Online. My name is Zach Ochoga, and I'm pastor of C6 Church. And uh, I just want to welcome you to this time together as we feast on God's word. Before we go into the teaching for today, I want to take some time and just pray for um, anybody who is sick, you know, and anybody who needs uh, provision. And uh, I want to pray for those who are on the front line, our first responders, doctors, nurses, any butt cleaners, anyone helping on the front lines at this moment. Would you join me in prayer at this moment? Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the privilege to come before you. Thank you for the privilege to spend time um, in your presence, in your word. And I want to take this moment, oh God, and pray for anybody in C6 Church or under the sound of my voice right now who is sick in their body. And I ask for healing, oh God. I believe that, Lord, you don't just heal us spiritually, but you heal us physically as well. And so I ask for healing, my Father. I ask that you protect uh, people from coronavirus, O oh God. And if anyone has contracted it, I ask for healing, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for those who are in need. I ask, Father, for your provision. We are all in need one way or the other. And I ask for your provision, O oh God, in our lives, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I want to pray for those who are on the front line, those who are serving, Lord, uh, people who may be sick or uh, helping those who, are, who have contracted the virus. I pray for our doctors. I pray for our nurses. I pray for cleaners who help keep the hospitals clean, help keep schools and different places clean. Father, I ask your blessing upon their lives. I ask your protection upon their lives, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And I pray that through the teaching of your word, there will be encouragement and hope and faith instilled in everyone's heart. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everyone say amen. I can't hear from here, but I trust that you said amen. 
Well, at C6 Church, we've been doing a series titled, I Am. And it has to do with the claims of Jesus Christ, audacious claims, dumbfounding claims that Jesus made about himself. And today is the fourth part in our series of the I Am claims of Jesus Christ. You know, many years ago, you know, I was living with my mom, not yet married, um, and then after a while, got my own place and living in my own place. And my mom went to went to school to qualify as a chartered accountant. That's what it's called in Nigeria. The equivalent here in the states would be um, a CPA. And um, and it, the time came for her induction into that. And she traveled. And she, she would, she, as she traveled, traveled it, was, it was a practice in our family that when you traveled, you stayed in touch with the family to let them know, you know, the progress made on your journey. So she was in touch with us, arrived safely, you know, uh, had a successful uh, induction, induction. And um, on the day that she was on her way, going to be on her way back, she let us know she was going to be on her way back and she was traveling by road. She was in a van, a taxi van with other passengers. And as the journey progressed, you know, she got to a certain stop on the road on her way back. She would let us know or let someone amongst uh, the family or my siblings know. But then it got to a certain time that we did not hear from her anymore. And I had done the math in my head. I knew what time she should have arrived, you know, back at home. And that time arrived... That, and she had not yet arrived. She had not yet got, gotten back home. And we would call her and we would not hear. Her phone would ring and we would not hear from her. Later on that night, we would no longer be able to even get through to her phone. I'll spare you the details. What happened was that my mom had a crash on her way back and died as a result of injuries from that crash. We never saw our mom again alive. The next time that I saw my mom... She was brought in an ambulance. In, um, that's what we call it in Nigeria. Um, here you call it a hearse. And um, I was one of the people, myself and my younger brother, we, we helped you know, take her body out of that, take it into the morgue. And, and I'm sure you Americans are freaking out right now. <laughs> uh, the other parts of the world, things are done differently from how they're done here. It was... It was, it, it, it was humbling. It was terrifying. It was sad. Just like that, our mom's life was over. The woman that had the greatest impact on my life. I remember days that would spend time together as a whole family, you know, and we'll spend the whole night in prayer, reading of scripture, and singing of hymns and songs, like from 10 p.m. to like 5 a.m. We'll do that together as a family. I remember heart-to-heart conversations that I had with her. And I'm sure all, all, my, all my siblings have their own stories to tell. Her life was over. Just like that, her life was over. Death is one thing that plagues humanity. I'm sure those of you listening to me have experienced losing someone there, someone close to you. One way or the other, someone may have died in your life. And if you have not yet experienced that, it would happen someday. I'm not wishing you anything bad. It's just life. Death is one thing that human beings have struggled with. Try to overcome all the vitamins that we take, all the supplements that we take, all the things that we do to, to, to prolong our years on earth. Is all, they are all attempts not to die. They are all attempts not to die. One of the reasons that the coronavirus is so feared is death. Is death. And because as human beings, we've not been able to master it yet, 
we, we, we detest anything we cannot master. And we know that, that if we don't master this thing, it could lead to the death of many more people. Death is the big problem here. Death is the big problem here. What does God have to say to us about this? Well, what does the word of God say about the situation we find ourselves in? Well, let's turn to the, to the scriptures. We're going to read a passage in John chapter 11, and we're going to look at an astounding statement that Jesus made about himself. And Jesus said of himself, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. And that's the title of today's message. The fourth part of the I am series, we're looking at the statement, I am the resurrection and the life. John chapter 11, verses 21 through 27. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Now, if you don't mind, join me now with a loud voice and let's read the next two verses together, 23 and 24. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Why don't we read the rest together? 25 through 27. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Let's look at the back. Let's back up a little bit. Look at the, the, the background and backdrop of this story. Now, Jesus was not at Bethany, and he got news that his friend Lazarus was sick. Now, when Jesus heard that his friend was sick, he did not go immediately to see his friend. He said, this sickness is not unto death, but that God may be glorified in it. In other words, something would happen that is more bad but God would be glorified in it. So Jesus stayed two days more, even after hearing that his friend Lazarus was sick. So by the time Jesus showed up, Lazarus had been dead and buried four days. Dead and buried four days. I want to pause here a little bit and speak to you. For those of you who are followers of Christ, have you ever experienced in your life where it seemed God delayed? Like, <clears throat> what's going on here? We've prayed about this. We're believing God. We've called on him. And for some reason, he's not showing up. That was what Mary and Martha, Martha and Lazarus experienced. Lazarus was sick. If Jesus had just been there in time, things would have been different. As a matter of fact, the first thing G Martha says to Jesus in verse 21 is, Lord, if you had been here, if you had just been in time, if you had not delayed, if you did not take so long, my brother would not have died. Now, this means that in the mind of Mary, of Martha, the only time that Jesus could have intervened and helped was before Lazarus died. But after he had died, Jesus could no longer help the situation. 
when you think about where we're at today with the coronavirus and all that's happening, and maybe you know someone who has contracted the illness, maybe you are unemployed, you know, and, and, and you, you, you have needs, and your needs are not being met yet. You're, 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 you're trusting God for provision in your life, and things aren't happening as you would hope they would happen. Maybe in your situation, do you, w- w- what frame of mind do you have? Do you think that, well, only if God had acted some time before now, things would have been better. Do you think that right now where we're at, what you're going through in your life today is past God's ability to help you? I hope you've not lost hope and you've not lost faith simply because God is not working on your time, on your schedule. The God that I serve The God that you serve, if you're a follower of Jesus, does not operate based on our timetable. He operates based on his. And there is no situation you would find yourself in or I would find myself in that is beyond his ability to intervene and help. What about if God allowed things to be so bad in my life, in your life, so he can show up and reveal himself to you and to me in a way and manner that we have never known him. Well, we'll see that. We see that in the story that we've just read in John 11. Jesus may have delayed, but he did not deny. Mary and Martha and Lazarus, a miracle from God. I'm sure you've heard delay is not denial. This is a good example of that. And when Martha had told Jesus that, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And maybe, can, can, I, tell, can I tell you something? Can I, just, can I just speak to you? You and me here, you know, and, and I'll speak as someone God has sent to you. Whatever situation you find yourself in, God can turn things around for you. Your hope for the future is in God alone. He says your brother will rise again. Your brother will rise again. You may have lost a job, but God may be speaking to you, you'll get back your job. It may not be that specific job, it might be a different job. So you may have lost something in your life as a result of the time that we found ourselves we find ourselves in. Maybe you've lost a business. God is saying, hey, don't worry. You'll get it back again. That might be what he's telling you now. What I want you to understand is that there's no situation that you are faced with that is beyond God to take care of. And Jesus says, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Now, the Jews believed in the resurrection. It was only the Sadducees, a sect, that did not believe in that. The Jews believed in the resurrection, and they believed in the last day. So there's something called the last day. When all people who have died, you know, will be raised again. And then after that comes judgment where God judges human beings and some people would be, they'll be raised back to life again to spend eternity with God and others would be eternity of punishment. That's what the Bible, that's what the Bible teaches. But what Jesus says here, when she says, I believe that he will be, he will rise again at the resurrection, on the last day, Mary, Martha, was thinking about a future date. And secondly, she was thinking about an event. Martha was thinking of a future date, and she was thinking about an event. And Jesus 
makes a profound statement, a mind-dazzling, <laughs> dizzying statement. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoa. In other words, Jesus was saying, it's not about a future date. It's about right now. It's about right now. It's not about an event. It's about a person. And that person is me. What Jesus was saying was, if you have me, the future is taken care of. If you have me, you'll experience the resurrection and the life. Even if it means now. And he was about to demonstrate that, you know, right there. I am the resurrection and the life. And Jesus said, whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And he asked her, do you believe this? You know, one of the things about Jesus is that you either believe him or not believe him. You believe him to your benefit and you choose not to believe him to your detriment. The way to respond to Jesus Christ is to believe in him. Is to believe in him. Look, in life, we have a huge problem of sickness and death. There's no government that, can, that has been able to deal with these two things satisfactorily. We've not been able to do anything about death. But in Jesus Christ, that is taken care of. And Jesus says, look, if you believe in him, even if you die in this life, you still live. You still live. As a matter of fact, someone who puts his faith in Christ and believes in Jesus Christ, the Bible makes us understand you do not really die. But as human beings, it still hurts us to see our loved ones go, even if they were followers of Christ, even if they placed their faith in Jesus Christ. It's, it still hurts, and we still have to grieve as a result of the loss of someone dear to us, someone that we love. But biblically speaking, a child of God does not really die. In fact, the New Testament describes it as sleep. You are just asleep. Now, as a follower of Christ, it's, pr it's, probable, it's possible for you to be a follower of Christ and not really think about this and believe this because Mary, Martha, was following Jesus. She was a follower of Jesus. And Jesus asked her, do you believe this? And look at the statement. She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. That was not the question he was asking, whether he was the Christ, the Son of God, coming into the world. The question was whether she believed that he was the resurrection and the life, and that if anyone believes in him, though the person dies, yet the person shall live. And if anyone believes in him, and the person is alive, the person will never die. That was the question he was asking her. Do you believe this? And she gave a different answer. Many Christians are like that. J just like me. We are faced with, we're confronted with a reality about who Christ is. And we go like, whoa, I never thought about that. But I, I don't know how to respond to this. And Jesus is asking you and he's asking me, in moments like this where death seems to be so threatening, do you believe this? Do you believe this? I want to encourage you to say, yes, I do. I want to encourage you to believe this. That Jesus in you, if you're a follower of Christ, is the hope of glory. Jesus in you is what secures your eternal destiny in God. That when you have Jesus, 
the future is taken care of. Now, when we talk about the resurrection and the life, we're touching on things that have to do with sickness, sickness unto death, and sickness uh, and death itself. Because the, the, the context of this story is that Lazarus was sick and Lazarus ended up dying. And Jesus is here to give hope and say, look, in spite of the fall, in spite of how things have changed as a result of man's humanity's sin against God, rebellion against God. And when we talk about rebellion, we simply mean deciding to go your way and not God's way. In spite of all of that, Jesus has the ability and capacity to make a difference here and now. Now, we're talking about the resurrection. We're talking about life. We're talking about answers to sickness that leads to death. We're talking about death. But I want you to understand that this same Jesus who is capable, who is the resurrection and the life, who brings people back to life and will bring everyone that has placed his faith and her faith in him and has died, he will bring each of them back to life on the last day. This same Jesus can do something about your situation that is not even near death. So it might have to do with your job. It might have to do with a relationship. It might have to do with, with, with finances, earning an income. Friend, the Lord that we serve cares so much about us that he is willing, ready, and able to do something about our day-to-day -day lives. Not just waiting for the day you die, and then on the last day, raise you up and bring you back to life. Do you believe this? I encourage you to say yes. And if you're not a follower of Christ, I want to encourage you to, to believe in Jesus Christ and put your faith in Jesus Christ. And what happens is, you know, the Bible says that everyone in Isaiah, the, 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 the one thing, the one problem, the one sin that has affected all of humanity is that everyone has turned to his or her own way. In other words, all of humanity, this is the one common denominator. Everyone has said, you know what? It's, it's not God. I want to go my way. I want to go my way. Now, in coming to Jesus Christ, you would have to think differently about how you run your life. You have to think, you have to think differently about what you have faith in. You might have faith in your abilities. You might have faith in the government. You, have, you might have faith in different other things, but not in Christ. But if you're going to follow Christ, you would have to think differently about all those things. You, will have, you would have to think differently about your lifestyle. And then say, you know what? I'm changing my mind. I'm giving up control of my life. I'm deciding that I will no longer run my life, but let Jesus run my life. Let Jesus give me direction. Jesus is the one I'll follow. Jesus is the person in whom I'll, I'll put my faith and confidence for life and for eternity. And that means it's a turnaround. And usually when that happens, it shows up in a change in lifestyle. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you as someone who has not yet put his faith or her faith in Jesus Christ to say, hey, I repent of my ways. You know, what that just simply means is I've changed my mind. I think differently about this. I am returning to God. I'm abandoning my present lifestyle and ways of doing things and making, and, and, and making a standard for myself, but rather go with God's standard and put my faith in Jesus Christ. I encourage you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life today. We're not talking about just the future, but here and now, today 
what should you do in the light of this? First, it is important for you to pursue, pursue a relationship with Christ. You might be a follower of Christ, but not have an active relationship and fellowship with Christ. You know, just imagine, I got married to Holly. And um, imagine after getting married to her, I just sit with her, share the same house with her. You know, sometimes maybe we eat together. We don't eat together. We don't hang out together. But before I got married to her, I pursued her. Or as Americans would say, I pursued her. How did I do it? I would call her. I would tell her I love her. I would send emails. I would, it, I would just cherish every opportunity that I could be with her. You know, we talked about dreams, about the future, things we would like to do and accomplish together. And then we get married, and I don't buy her gifts. I don't, you know, spend time with her. I don't tell her I love her much. Um, I, I, we were busy with every other thing in marriage, but not spending time together. I'm not pursuing her like I once did. That marriage, the marriage will have a problem. A big problem. And it, may, it will not succeed. But having been married to her, and I, and I tell her still that I love her, we go out on dates, we sit down and talk about the future and things I want to do. I understand what her love language is, and I speak to her in that language, it helps our relationship. It builds our relationship. It means we have an active relationship. We're involved in each other's life in ways that recognize the person and not just a bunch of duties and responsibilities. It is the same in your relationship with Christ. Some people just think, well, I've given my life to Christ, and that's all. But you do nothing to have an active relationship with him. You don't spend time in scripture and the word to, 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 to hear his heart and what he has to say to you. You don't obey him when he speaks to you and shows you things from the Bible, from scripture, from the word of God and instructs you on things that you should do. You don't do them. You don't live a life of obedience. You don't live a life of prayer, of, of communication with him, you know, talking to Jesus every day. It's a passive relationship. Now, while I understand this might be a little, a, a little of a stretch, but I think that there's something in this for you and I to learn. When Mary had said, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. If you had been here. So it meant that Jesus was not there with her. And probably I, there's nothing she could have done to have had Jesus there with her. But look at it in, applica in application to your life. If Jesus is just passive in your life, there are things you would go through that he would not intervene in because he's just a passive person in your life. But if Jesus is actively present in your life as a result of your interaction with him through the study of scripture, through obedience to scripture, through time in prayer, in communication with him, he can help you. There are things that would have, that got worse that he would have stopped from getting worse. And you know what? Even in the times that we're living in today, in many ways, but for God, this world would have been destroyed. So in your life, make it a priority to spend time with him. I, I, my desire for you is that in this period of time, in, uh, with the lockdown, shutdown, 
quarantine, quarantine, whatever, you know, that you would get to know Jesus in a way that you've never known him before. It was in the worst of circumstances that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus got to know Jesus in a way they had never known him before. And all the onlookers also got to know Jesus or see a side of Jesus that they had never seen. Friends, is it possible that God wants to use your situation today to reveal himself to your neighbors and friends in ways that they have never known him? Don't be so absorbed and focused on all the things that are going wrong. I want you to start thinking, what is God up to? How does God want to show up in this? What, how does God want to use me? Begin to pray a prayer of yieldedness and surrender and say, Lord, I don't make much sense of this, but I want you to be honored and glorified in my life and through my life in spite of all that is going on. There is someone listening to me now that this makes the most sense to. You just need to yield to him, surrender to him. Yeah, everything doesn't make sense to you. And just go, Lord, I don't know what you want to do out of all of this, but here I am. Use me. In my life and through my life, accomplish your purpose. It reminds me of the prayer, the Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And one of the things I pray every time I come to the place, the point of hallowed be your name, is to say, Lord, may your name be honored. May your name be honored in my life. May your name be honored through my life. That's a prayer you should pray. Lord, in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, in the midst of uh, being unemployed, uh, losing income, Lord, in, in the midst of being terrorized by this virus, may your name be honored in my life. May your name be honored through my life. May your name be honored in all of this. And may your name be honored through all of this. You would have an understanding of Jesus, of Jesus Christ like no other time that you would have had that understanding. Something next that you need to do is to live courageously. Live courageously. So the first, I said pursue a relationship. Pursue a relationship with Christ. Let him be actively present in your life, not passive. The next thing I encourage you to do is to live courageously. Like if you truly believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, how are you going to live? Are you going to live in fear? Are you going to live in fear of death, in fear of the coronavirus, in fear that you may never recover from the impact of this pandemic? I'm not, I'm not asking you to be stupid or foolish. We, we, we need to take care of ourselves. We need to take care of our neighbors. We need to be preventative in all of this but not to live in fear, but to live courageously. You know, sometimes fear leads us to do so, so many things. Fear leads us to give up. Even before anything has begun, we give up. There's no fight. Fear makes us to think about only ourselves and not others. One of the ways that you could live courageously is to begin to think of other people. How can I help them? How can I be a blessing to them in the midst of all of this? One way that you live courageously is that you live generously. Because what fear does is it makes you to hoard. Makes you to hoard. You buy more toilet paper than you would ever need. <laughs> you know? 
by sanitizing stuff more than you would ever need. And maybe your neighbor needs some toilet paper. Maybe your neighbor needs some disinfectant wipes. Can I call on you and ask you, after this teaching, if you have more than enough of any of these things, to get in touch with a few people and ask them, do you need any of these? I can spare you some. That would mean truly living generously and not hoarding and keeping more than you need. And finally, prioritize eternity over this present life. When you truly believe that Jesus Christ is the resurrection of the life, then you realize that eternity is more important than this present life. Like I once read, life is short, eternity is long. Life is brief, eternity is long. Many times we live our lives as though this is all. There's nothing beyond this life. And this is one of the reasons why when we lose something, it is so devastating because we've been living like this is all. Friends, when you prioritize eternity over the present, it helps you handle loss. You lose a job. Lose an opportunity. Lose a business. It helps you handle loss. Because eternity is what matters and not just this life. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you live your life like this life does not matter at all. This life does matter. It does matter. Because it is the place that you prepare for eternity. It does matter. However, in order of priority, you need to place eternity over and above this life. And when you pr begin to prioritize eternity over and above this life, the way you handle money will change. The way you handle your time will change. The way you handle your relationships will change. And all the blessings that you have in your life, how you handle them will be different because eternity is your priority and not just this moment and this time. Would you become more intentional about handling things differently? Having a view of eternity. Friends, when this life is over, everything that we have here is gone. But if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, what you do with this time will give you rewards from him. Don't confuse that with your eternal life in Christ. Don't confuse that with your eternal life with, in Christ. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. And so it is by grace. You put your faith in Christ, and that's what saves you. That is what saves you. But after salvation, how you live your life and what you do in life will determine whether Jesus will tell you at the end of, the, at the end of your life, well done or not. And whether he would have a reward for you or not. Read the New Testament. Read the book of Revelation. Jesus himself says, I come quickly. And he says he comes with rewards. With rewards for people. And so how you make use of your life and the resources God has given you would speak also in eternity. This is why it's so important for you to prioritize eternity over the present. Can you imagine what would happen if you and I would prioritize eternity over the present, would live with courage rather than 
fear and timidity would pursue an active relationship with Jesus Christ and not just have him as a passive presence in our lives will change this world. We'll have impact on the lives of people. Marriages will be saved. People will be, the character of people will be impacted as a result of what you do, what I do. People will live life differently because of your influence and my influence. We'll end up, you and I would end up fulfilling what we were born to do and to fulfill. And the beauty of it all is that after it's all been done and said, we'll be spending eternity with God. At this moment, I'd like you to bring out, well, <laughs> you know, I said bring out. I should say, I want you to click on the link for your connection card and fill out your connection card. I want you to take the time to fill out your connection card. I, I, you, could, you could jump to the place where we have feedback. What are you going to do today as a result of this message you've heard? What are you going to do next? And if you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, would you today make a decision in your mind and say, I will no longer run my life. I'm abandoning my ways to follow Christ. Check that box on the digital uh, connection card that you have. Check that box. I would love to know and welcome you to God's family and pray for you as a member, a new member of God's family. After you fill out the connection card, please make sure to hit the submit button. I'm going to see your card. I'm going to read your card and I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for you. In case you want to reach me, all you need to do is shoot me an email at hello at c6church.com. Hello at c6church.com. I'm going to get it. I'm going to read it. And I'll respond to you or pray for you, whatever that email calls for. Next Sunday is going to be Easter. I want to encourage you to invite your friends to join us online for Easter Sunday. We have our Easter invitation on Facebook. Please take the time to invite your friends, to share that on your Facebook page as well, and invite your friends for that. We're going to collect our offerings at this moment. We have three ways that you can give your offerings. One is for you to just go to c6church.com and give there. Simple, it's easy. A second way that you can give is for you to just text the word GIVE to 940-236-0778 and you'll be able to give just via text. It's very user-friendly. The third way to give is to send in a check um, to our address, 2601 South Minnesota Avenue, Suite 105, PMB 360, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105 is the zip code. Can I pray for you in closing? Father in heaven, I ask your blessing on each person in this online service listening. I ask for a revelation of Jesus Christ in their situation it's like they have never had before. May the power that raised Jesus from the dead be at work in their life, O oh God. And may situations that are beyond their ability, Lord, receive your touch. May this week be a good week, a great week, Lord, in spite of all that's happening. In Jesus' name, I pray. Everyone say, Amen. I think I heard someone say, Amen. You have a blessed week till we meet again. Bye.